Evening, folks. Papa D here from David Deliver Space. Thank you for stopping by this evening for another launch coming to you from uh, Cape Canaveral here in uh, Central Florida. Uh, tonight's flight's a special one. Uh, some items to note that uh, you might not be aware of. But this is flight, uh, it's a Starlink group, group 649. It's 23 sats, uh, the mini version 2 sats that will be going into uh, in the Constellation. More volume here. There we go. And uh, booster 1062 is the booster number, and this is flight number 20. And I believe a record. Uh, if we are successful with the launch and the landing. The uh, landing itself will be out off the coast of Florida. And it's going to be on a short fall of gravitas. And another milestone, at least from what I've seen recently, the turnaround time on this booster was 28 days. I don't think I've seen one that short. Normally in the 30s, that's a good turnaround. So they turned this booster fairly quickly from its 19th flight to its attempted 20th flight. So it's going to be exciting. Again, this is a Starlink mission. And uh, just to uh, give you a perspective, we've had a beautiful day here in Florida. As you can see, this, believe it or not, is the live feed that we uh, are blessed to be able to get from a tab of, a tab of blue. <coughs> excuse me. And uh, we appreciate them allowing us to use their data and their feed. But you can see uh, cloud cover nearly non-existent. And if things hold, let's just check the uh, wind direction here, what we got as far as wind. Everything is looking really good. Ground winds look good. So at this point, we're looking really good there. And I'll give you a peek at something we try to show prior to every launch. And this is the launch mission execution forecast. This is something that is issued for each and every flight. There's also a weekly forecast for the entire week with a very, very good breakdown of the weather conditions. That comes out on Thursday. I try to post that out on the website whenever I can. But that is available, and it is available from the 45th Weather Squad. Uh, the uh, folks out there do an awesome job. And as you can see by this, the chance of a launch day uh, violation, weather violation, is 5%. And to keep that in perspective, you'll never see a 100% chance of launch. If you see a 5% chance of violation, that's 100%, close to 100% as you're going to get. Uh, visibility is good. Liftoff winds uh, seem to be good, as I showed you on the uh, wind graphic. Uh, they look to be within constraints. And uh, the upper level wind shears, are, a, are the only additional risk criteria right now that they're looking at. That's a low to moderate risk. Uh, if you look down towards the 24-hour forecast here, it's the same percentage uh, as far as violating the weather constraints, but those upper-level wind shears go away. So if you had to really say what's the better day for the launch by the 45th Weather Squadron, uh, tomorrow would be it. But uh, you're not going to beat a 5% chance of violation, that's for sure. But uh, we are looking at, uh, right now, everything is looking to be an on-time launch. Uh, let me check. Yeah, we're looking to be on time with everything. Uh, looking at a 9 o'clock. Well, there was a delay on that. Uh, so we're looking at a short delay. We're going to switch over a couple camera angles here so I can check if anything has changed and I apologize for that uh, let's see where my there we are yeah we're looking at a T0 now at 922 it was 9 o'clock of course so 922 about 11 minutes to go so uh, we are uh, Right now on time and on uh, on the numbers. 
And again, we are looking at good weather conditions, a very minimal chance of wind-related, weather-related issues, and uh, a milestone for SpaceX, uh, assuming we can get another one in the books tonight. That'll be Flight 20 for uh, Booster 1062. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of uh, activity coming up this week. We've got a Rocket Lab launch. We've got some more Starlink launches, uh, some international launches. So you can check out the uh, channel or the web page. And uh, we have everything listed as it comes up, and we do modify the time so you can uh, be sure that if you hit that notify button, you will be notified uh, properly and correctly when the launch is getting ready to take off. A uh, couple thank yous. I'm going to start off with uh, the uh, family pizza night. I was invited out for uh, a wonderful uh, pizza and some awesome company. I'll thank my uh, daughter and son-in-law for that. Uh, again, thanking Mateo Blue for allowing us to utilize their data and their weather maps. We greatly appreciate that. Also, our subscribers. Uh, we are at a new milestone threshold, and we just keep uh, – Knocking it out of the park, thanks to you. And we thank our subscribers for their confidence in the channel and my ability to bring you the launches and to bring you some information that uh, you might not uh, can get somewhere else, but maybe not get it in the same way. And uh, we just try to bring as much of this to you. It's an exciting time we live in here, and these launches will never get mundane and, and old. And we want to thank any new subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe. We'd love to uh, have you on board. Hit that uh, subscribe button, that like button, ring that bell, do all that YouTube stuff because it all helps get us out there and get us in front of more people so we can bring our uh, programming and our message to many people. Uh, leave comments. We love the comments. Uh, love to uh, have our... Subscribers, uh, tell us what they like, what they don't like, and what they want to see. And we appreciate every one of you for being out there. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, then, uh, you know, we certainly are uh, reading everyone, trying to reply to everyone. You never know. You may find us uh, giving you a call and or uh, sending you an email and saying, hey, uh, what do you want me to send a sticker to? Uh, we'd love to be able to do some of that uh, as much as we can. So at this point, I'm going to go on standby for a bit. Uh, we are looking at uh, SpaceX should be coming on here in the next couple of minutes. I'm going to go check, make sure that is all on board and on time. I'll get back here in just a second, and we will be ready, uh, hopefully, for another spectacular launch and a um, another historic launch with Launch 20. So let me bring the maps up quickly. And I will uh, be back here with the uh, feed as soon as SpaceX brings it through. Again, thanks all for uh, tuning in. And uh, we'll talk again here in just a minute. All right, folks, Papa D back here. I just uh, recycled through uh, the launch uh, mission clock, and we are now backed up a bit. Time now is 9.40. Uh, normally, SpaceX will go live. It looks like they're... If it holds, 
Uh, my guess would be that it's those upper level wind shears. now uh, it's a cool calm night as far as the ground winds go uh, the wind uh, looks to be uh, right now running Let me take a look at this looks like the uh, wind is running about 8 to 12 miles an hour at the coast uh, but the upper shears are the only concern that uh, the weather squadron had. So again, we're looking at a new T0 of 940 this evening. It is uh, now 2116. So we'll be looking at a, a T0 running out at about uh, 25 minutes if that time holds. We'll go live at 916, which should be you know, SpaceX clock hadn't changed. They're still showing 916. Now they have it at 934, so it just switched over. So we'll be going live here with them at 934-ish. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll put the uh, maps on rotation for you here shortly. And we'll just keep an eye on the weather. Again, uh, my senses tell me that it is upper-level wind shear concerns. Nothing that I can see otherwise. Again, unless they're having a mechanical issue and nothing has yet come up on the uh, on the screen about that. So, uh, again, we'll stand by here and uh, hang with me. We'll wait for the uh, – there's my puppy dog walking by. But uh, we'll wait here for uh, SpaceX to go live, and hope we will, hopefully we will have a launch tonight. Uh, again, that's going to be uh, Booster 1062. Flight number big 20. So uh, we'll stand by. And uh, any new news, I'll come right back to you. Thanks, folks. Appreciate you.
right, folks. Papa D here again. Just wanted to check back in. We are at T0 in about 15 and a half minutes right now. Uh, we are looking. There we go. We are looking at a, uh, a T0 of 940 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The uh, conditions, we believe, uh, at upper levels are the issues. I'm going to be standing by on that, but we do expect SpaceX to uh, be able to go live for us here. We're expecting at least, hopefully, uh, at 9.34. Yeah, 9.34 is when we expect the feed to open up for us. Uh, right now, everything looking positive from the ground anyway. And... Uh, We'll just page through the maps. This is all current coverage again provided by Mateo Blue for us. Thanks again for the use of their data. It's greatly appreciated. And I know our viewers will appreciate the uh, ability to see those of us th from not from the area, those from outside the area, uh, getting a live view of what the weather conditions are that we're looking at when we, especially are looking at the execution forecast and the probability of violation. Just for a recap, for uh, those of you that just joined in, we are awaiting launch of the most recent Starlink. It's Group 649. Original T0 was 9 p.m. Uh, we're a little bit delayed, and we are looking at uh, a T0 of about 940. Uh, I'm not sure the reason, whether it is mechanical, but could be the high altitude uh, gusts that they're been worried about, part of that 5% chance of violation. Uh, Booster 1062 is attempting flight number 20. Again, if I'm not mistaken, that is a record. We had Booster 1068, 58, I believe. That is, uh, was close and uh, ended up falling over on the barge coming back in. Uh, with the, this uh, booster is a 28-day turnaround, and it will be uh, received by a shortfall of Gravitas just off the coast of Florida, of course. So, uh, again, we will stand by. Uh, enjoy. We'll page through all the live map coverage, all the weather coverage we get. And, uh, again, I, w I always recommend people, if you uh, want to follow up on these weather events and uh, all, all that goes into it, visit the uh, 45th Weather Squadron. They have a great web page, provide a ton of information, and you can bring down these uh, weekly reports and uh, stay on top of uh, where you stand with respect to launches coming out of the Cape Canaveral Space Center. So with that, we'll stand by. We should be able to hopefully go live here in uh, somewhere in the range of about six minutes. Thanks, folks.
Hi everybody, Papa D here again. Just wanted to check back in. We are still looking at T0 of 940. And we are still looking at a few minutes before that, uh, getting our live feed from SpaceX. So time here in Central Florida right at this time is 2132. So we are looking at T0 in about seven and a half minutes. And uh, we will bring you that feed here momentarily. Again, this is Starlink Group 649, flight number 20, the big 20, if it is recovered. And uh, we are hoping for that. 72nd orbital launch attempt, 338th mission, and 38th mission of 2024. So uh, Starlink keeps knocking it out of the park. Again, thank you to SpaceX for providing these feeds to us and allowing us to educate the public and bring our uh, own brand of coverage. But uh, the feeds they provide us are awesome. We do appreciate that. Uh, certainly beats what we used to find back in the Apollo days. Maybe a long time before many of your time. But uh, thank you to the subscribers. Thank you to any new subscribers that jump on board tonight. We'd love to have you as a member of the family. Come on in, hit the bells, hit the buzzers, ring the bells, hit the ring. Do all that cool stuff. We'd love to have you. And you'll be notified when we have new content that hits the channel. And uh, we'll stand by here momentarily. We should be getting our feet, and we'll bring that to you and watch together, we hope, the 20th launch of a Falcon 9 Block 5. Falcon 9 is in startup. Go for launch. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Minus ten, nine, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition, and lift off of Starlink 649, a Falcon flies for the 20th time. Engine chamber pressure is nominal. Go SpaceX, go Starlink for the 20th time. Congratulations, SpaceX. Everything looking good. Telemetry looks good at this point. Ring state, straight and hot and normal. Won't be too long. We'll be coming up on uh, max Q, which is the point of right, maximum aerodynamic going. pressure. At that point will be in the throttle bucket. Engines will throttle back slightly as the Falcon 9 passes through max Q and then throttle back up after that. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. MVAC engine chill. And they will, as they always do, chill that MVAC engine. Make sure that the engine igniting and the fuel slamming into the pumps uh, do not cause a failure. So they'll chill them down with just a little bit of liquid oxygen. We're coming up on a quick succession of things. You're going to have Miko main engine cutoff. You're going to have stage separation shortly thereafter, and then the second stage ignition, followed by the jettison of the uh, two fairing halves. And that will be starting up momentarily. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC startup. And, and there we go. We have stage separation. We've got the MVAC. That is the specially modified engine that's designed just for flight outside of the atmosphere. You see on the left, the grid fins are starting to come out. Grid fins will control the direction and assist in the landing of uh, the first stage once it does hit the thicker part of the atmosphere. Fairing separation confirmed. And there is the fairing separation. Uh, as I've said before, this is about a $6 million nut for uh, SpaceX. They will recover those two halves, uh, refurbish if possible, and fly them again. And that is a big cost savings and part of the overall reusability. We've been told. Looks like second stage is still running hot. First stage has reached its apogee of entry burn. Once those three center core engines ignite, we'll see a massive uh, drop off of both altitude and uh, speed. As the grid fins take over, the cold gas thrusters assist and uh, they make the flight back to the recovery ship just off the coast a shortfall of gravitas Awesome pictures looking up the uh, length of the 
first stage where the uh, second stage sat just a, a couple of minutes ago. Altitude's starting to burn off pretty good. Of course, speed's coming up because this thing is free-falling. And uh, entry burn will be here just very shortly. It's a very short burn, but it accomplishes the first phase of braking so the first stage can begin its uh, approach onto the recovery ship. What you're seeing there are the entry burn thrusters, startup. and that is the entry burn. And again, we have nine engines burning at liftoff. We have three at the entry burn and one for the final landing burn. And that is throttling, by the way. Stage two FTS is safe. Stage one entry burn shut down. Okay, we have our entry burn complete. The flight termination system has saved itself. Stage one trajectory nominal. Everything seems to be on course and ready to roll. Fingers crossed for landing number 20. You see those grid fins heat up as the air... Causes the uh, friction, but they are doing their job. The uh, speed is reducing, taking advantage of the atmospheric conditions and the air, the friction of the air, to continue slowing that vehicle until the final landing burn. Again, Stage one single transonic. Merlin engine. And if you were out in the ocean right now, you would have heard that sonic boom when they went transonic. Should be seeing very shortly there. That little dot get a lot bigger. Just amazing footage, amazing things that uh, SpaceX and other commercial carriers Stage are doing one these landing days. Burn. There is the landing burn. Come on, 1062. Landing lead deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And folks, we have a new record. Stage one, booster 1062 has landed for the 20th time. And back shut down. Nominal orbit. And we have nominal orbit insertion. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. An exciting evening. I don't care how many of these you watch. They're all exciting to watch. At least they are for Papa D. Uh, we had a uh, record setter, a perfect launch, a little bit delayed. Uh, we had about a 40-minute delay. I uh, haven't seen anything yet come across. I'm guessing it was the uh, winds that caused that. But, again, we had a launch. We had the uh, historic landing. And uh, if you want to follow out on X through the uh, SpaceX page, uh, they will follow and they'll provide uh, additional footage of when they release the Starlink satellites. Uh, that'll come da down the road just here shortly. Uh, they've reached their orbit. It's just a matter of uh, hitting the right spot to where they begin the release. But uh, with this, we're going to end the broadcast for this evening. I want to, uh, again, as I always do, thank SpaceX. 
Uh, thank everyone that works there. You guys knock it out of the park. Uh, what you're doing uh, for our future is amazing, and uh, it's only going to get more exciting with all the uh, goings on and with Starlink, with uh, Starship 4 coming up here in probably about a month, a little less than a month probably at this point. So we'll be following all that. Uh, thank them. Thank Mateo Blue again. Always do appreciate you guys allowing us to use your data and uh, share that with our subscribers. I want to thank the subscribers. Again, we're hitting uh, milestones and getting out there and being able to pre present these launches to uh, a lot of folks, and we are excited about that. I'm genuinely excited about it. Never thought that I'd get the opportunity. And uh, just shortly, too, I'll be able to, as you've noticed, I've been out of the uh, studio area, so I'll be able to get back in the studio here in the next uh, day or so. So we'll be able to... Uh, Kind of get back to my normal surroundings. Uh, if you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not a subscriber, again, feel free to look around. Check things out. We'd love to have you be a part of the family. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit all the buttons. Hit the bells. Hit the whistles. Uh, we'd love to have you on board whenever we go live or whenever we present uh, a new video. So with that, I will say good evening, and we'll see you at the next launch. Uh, check out the page. The channel has all the updated times. We keep those updated for you. We'll see you at the next one. Have a good evening. Have a great Friday and have a great weekend. We'll see you at the next one.